Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm going to be unboxing and building a Smaraza Raspberry Pi 3 case for the B model and B+. And this is called the 9-layered case, and it's called that because it's actually made with 9 different layers of plastic. And when you buy this case, you get quite a few other accessories that come with it. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the 9-layered case. So if you're looking to get this case, you can find it on Amazon, and I'll make sure to post a link down below. And it's going for about 16 bucks, but for that price, you get quite a bit. You get heat sinks, you get a fan, you get an AC adapter, and you get a power cord with a power switch built in. So this would be classified more as a starter kit because you get all that stuff included. And what's nice about this case is it's very simplistic, but yet it's very functional. This case gives you access to all your ports, and you even have access to the GPIO pins. So whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, this case could work for you. Here's a look at what you get inside the box. You get the case itself, and it does come protected with some paper on the top and bottom to protect it from scratches. Here's a look at the AC adapter, and the output power on this is 5 volt, 2.5 amps. Here's a look at the power cord, and it's got a built-in on-off switch, and I call this more of a kill switch because it kills the power to the Raspberry Pi. Here's some instructions that are very detailed in color, step by step. Here are some heat sinks. We have two larger ones and one smaller one. We also have some rubber feet to keep the thing from sliding. And you also get a fan. And this fan's actually nice and quiet. I was surprised how quiet it was. So to complete this build, you will need a few other things. You will need the Raspberry Pi 3 B model or B plus. You're gonna need an operating system. I like to use RetroPie. And you're also gonna need a controller or a keyboard or you can get a combo like this. This is a keyboard plus game controller all in one. So I'm going to start with removing just three screws on the top of the case here. And each of these screws is secured with a small nut, and they should only be hand tight. If for some reason they're not, you can just use a small pair of pliers to hold the nut. Now I only removed three screws, that way the case would somewhat stay together. This is nine different layers, so if you take all the layers off, it becomes kind of a puzzle. So for me, I found it was a lot easier just to leave one screw in place, that way I could keep all these pieces organized. And you can go ahead and remove that protective film anytime you want. All this does is it keeps it from scratching. So the top of the case is going to be where the fan mount is. So what we want to do first is go ahead and pull out the bottom three layers. Once we have the bottom three layers pulled out, it's time to put in your Pi 3. And if you want to, you can go ahead and take that case all the way apart and put this together piece by piece, but I found doing it this way is a lot easier. Now your Raspberry Pi 3 is going to go inside the case just like this, with the USB ports to the left and the micro SD card slot to the right. And there really is no rhyme or reason for all these layers. It's just unique and I like it. So now it's time to put on the fourth layer and all these layers are gonna be nice and flexible. So you should have no problem flexing this just a little bit so it can go over the top of the USB ports, then push down in place. Now you just wanna keep repeating that process until you make it to the top layer. And it is pretty satisfying how it goes together. It's like a 3D puzzle. And here's how it should look when you have all those layers in place except for the top. Your Raspberry Pi 3 should kinda of be locked in place now with access to all your ports. And this case also reminds me of Legos. Even though those layers don't lock together, when they're stacked on top of each other, it really reminds me of Legos. Now it's time to attach your heat sinks. And these are optional, you don't have to install these, but it will help keep it just a little bit cooler. So to install these, there is an adhesive tape on the bottom of these. Then you just match the same size heat sink to the same size computer chip. Now it's time to go ahead and install the fan to the top layer of the case. And it's gonna install with the label down and it's gonna install on the bottom side of that layer. And there's gonna be four screws that come supplied with it with the Phillips part of the screw going on the top of the case. And again, you just wanna hand tighten these, you don't have to get too carried away. Now I'm gonna secure the case in one of the corners with a screw temporarily without the top layer. And I'm doing this so I can remove that top layer and get it into position without all my layers coming apart. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove that top layer and plug the fan in. And you can plug that fan in in a couple different ways. Um, I'm going to plug it into the 3.3 volt low speed, that way it doesn't draw so much power, but you do have the option for the 5 volt plug-in. And when you plug it in, it should look just like this. Now I'm going to carefully put the top in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and secure one of the corners with a screw, and that's going to go through all nine layers. After I get one screw in place, I'm going to go ahead and remove that temporary screw I put in earlier. And again, the reason I did this is so I could keep all those layers attached, because if you remove all those screws, those layers will fall apart real easy. Now it's time to install those remaining three screws through all nine layers. Now you can attach your rubber feet to the bottom of the case, and this will help keep that case from sliding and keep it nice and stable. And here's a look at it after it's all put together. 
and you can see you have access to your GPIO pins, your USB ports, your Ethernet port, your HDMI port, AV out port, and your power port in, along with your micro SD card access. And here it is up and running with a RetroPie 4.4 image. And like I stated earlier, that fan is super quiet. A lot of different fans that I've messed with for the Pi 3s have been kind of loud and annoying, and sometimes I don't even want to hook them up because they're so distracting. But with this fan, that doesn't seem to be an issue. And here's a look at the power switch, and this would be classified as a hard shutdown because it kills power to the Raspberry Pi 3. And when you're using this switch, I'd recommend not using it like I just showed you. When you go to shut it down, you should probably access the menu of RetroPie, then navigate to quit, and then shut down emulation station. And then from there, you can hit that power switch, and that'd be a much safer way of shutting this down. So there you go, that's a look at this Miraza Pi 3 case. And with all the accessories you get with this, I think it's a pretty good deal. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.